Having a happy life, finding your purpose, finding your passion, that's something we all want, right? We're trying to figure it out every single day. Well, what if I told you your gut health might be at the root of this? In fact, not just your gut health, but your microbiome, all those bacteria swimming around in your belly, but also all over our bodies. Well, my next guest, Eric Katz, is going to break all of this down for us and help us connect how our gut health, our microbiome, may actually influence our life and our life choices, helping us find our mission and our purpose. Check it out. One question I'll get over and over again from patients is, can we change our microbiome? Is it possible to shift it and change it if it's so set in the prenatal time frame and then going into those first couple of years of life? What do you say to that? Yes, I think, I mean, the answer is your microbiome is changing. I mean, you'll see a microbiome change after a bowel movement. Um, so absolutely. I think what, what, what is interesting is that there's this notion that, you know, in the face of like dysbiosis or like mm-hmm. after antibiotics that you want to get it back to where it was right that. So, and, and in an ecosystem, I think what we're looking for is not the return to exactly how something was, but a return to stasis, right? Like a, this notion of kind of like resilience and absolutely between like nutrition, diet, um, uh, not like, you know, kind of consistent or continual use of antibiotics or antimicrobials. Um, a lot of the health, I mean, everything from mm-hmm. like sleep to, I mean, a, and a, absolutely these things kind of cultivate what would, as I said, with very big quotation marks, because in science it's, there's not like consensus yet as to like what exactly a healthy microbiome looks like, right. but there's certainly biomarkers and certainly metabolites that are, cl- are clear indicators of a functioning and healthy microbiome, obviously very clear immune and inflammatory indicators too. And so um, absolutely some of the diet from a nutritional perspective, like we know that uh, diets that are uh, plant-based with um, diverse amounts of plants, polyphenols, phytonutrients, I mean, absolutely we know there's compounds that specifically encourage the growth of, um, of microbes. Uh, we know how the critical importance of fiber and plant fibers Um, we, and we know the impact of things like alcohol, um, and other, you know, other perturbations. Um, we know the effects of like lack of sleep. So a lot of the things that, you know, are probably just part of a regular healthy diet, but now there's like, or, or lifestyle, but now there's like very clear, um, like kind of microbial rationale for things. Um, particularly when it comes to, I think diet and nutrition being probably some of the, the, the most, one of the most important things you could do. And of course, things like probiotics, but those really are not meant to adjust the composition of the microbiome, but are meant to be microbes that are that signal and or do very specific things kind of in transit versus mm-hmm. the notion that I think people have a myth about probiotics where you take them to kind of repopulate. Right. Um, right. But that's not, un, trust me, I w- it would be easier to explain to people if that's how they work, but it's not really how they actually like how, their mechanism of action. Interesting. So many people ask about probiotics yes. and prebiotics. What do you say to supplementation with a lot of that? What I say is that, and and obviously that's like the core of all of our work, which is that we look at very specific applications of microbes as probiotics, um, either as uh, supplementation, as topical application, as oral application, or as therapeutics in the case of all of our women's health work. So Mm -hmm. for me, like that, there's a massive future in probiotics, just not the way the term is used today, the serious Mm -hmm. field of science of probiotics, where you're looking at strains and or cocktails of strains or consortia Mm -hmm. and putting them through human clinical work to measure very specific endpoints. Absolutely. I think is going to be incredibly important and, and, and and particularly like in the future when we have much larger data sets um, and other biomarkers, we're going to start to even think about like, are there areas where those could be personalized today? I believe in like the work that we do. And I believe in there's some other companies that I think are in, and, and researchers that are absolutely doing things, I think in a way that moves the field forward. Unfortunately, in the United States, the term itself is not regulated. Right. And so, you know, it's why you could go on Amazon right now and buy probiotic chocolate and tortilla chips and uh, home cleaning products and pillowcases right. uh, that are all considered probiotic because right. you can just say the term, um, which is of course not true. And so we, as a science, as a field of science, uh, as specific strains that are provided in the correct dosage that's been ver- verified and validated through clinical research to have very specific measurable endpoints in the human body, 
absolutely. Unfortunately, the way the field plays out when you walk into the grocery store or the pharmacy is just like a wall of, right. I have no uh, idea what to make of this. Right. right. And so yeah. that's very, that's very, of course, makes it very, very yeah. challenging, but as a field, I mean, in prebiotics, of course, like incredibly, I mean, when it comes to infant formula, yeah. uh, again, going back to providing those HMOs, those um, oligosaccharides, those carbohydrates that are critical for the development of the microbiome. Um, prebiotics in food and diet and nutrition, absolutely as substrates and compounds that your microbes mm -hmm. can use to either grow yeah. or turn into other things. Um, and then in some cases uh, for certain people, um, depending on what their conditions are, the supplementation of prebiotics may be meaningful. Mm -hmm.